G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, late one here, so Sunday afternoon here in Australia and the market is down, so $1.53 trillion uh, total market cap. Still hanging above that $1.5 trillion, so you know, not really too worried, but still down, and particularly when you jump over here and have a look at the, you know, the market, uh, it's not looking pretty. Uh, see a red all over the place generally. BTC dominance. Uh, under 44%, ETH dominance under 17%, and gas prices, I mean, still super cheap uh, in comparison to where they've been previously. And really, anything in a single digit is pretty good. This is just, you know, one above single digits. So generally not too bad, but I mean, look. Ugh, just looks ugly, doesn't it? Red, 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 red. Definitely still some green there. It's not that, you know, there's nothing that's, uh, you know, doing well. But generally, overall, not looking very pretty. And Bitcoin literally, you know, has been up and, you know, just dumped straight back down, you know, over seven days, just traveling sideways. All right, last 24 hours. Let's have a look. Has anything done okay? We saw that AMP had done all right. So there, AMP still up the top. So it's up 15, uh, 50, sorry, Ford. Let's just round it up. 55% for seven days. Are we doing all right? Sushi, uh... NX, sorry, XDC network. Yep, don't even know what that that is. Phantom, uh, Yearn. So we got a couple of small moves there over the last sort of 24 hours. Nothing too crazy really, except for AMP and uh, Arweave. They're doing all right, but generally it looked pretty bleak. So let's have a look. Guessing the reds are probably going to be fairly substantial. Now nothing major like to the high side of things, but I mean you just go down. There's a lot of red there. And the good thing is, you know, generally just sort of single digit losses, if there's anything good about losses. Yeah, a lot of red. But, you know, again, nothing sort of too major. So generally, it means that things are kind of sort of traveling sideways, still on the downside, but, you know, nothing sort of too drastic at the moment. So let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So we can confirm the death cross has happened. And again, the thing we need to remember with death crosses is that they are a lagging indicator. So they're showing you what's sort of already happened. It's not really showing you what's about to happen. Although, you know, yeah, I mean, it's a lagging indicator. Most indicators are. <laughs> There's not too many indicators that are really telling you sort of what's coming. It's, you know, it's showing you what's either happening right now or what has happened. And then it's from there you need to make your decision. So again, for me, I'm not going to go too much into the Bitcoin charts. We're still well within this range. We're kind of not, you know, going outside of it and what I did was I put in a new line here to adjust for these you can see we're bouncing off it almost perfectly right now so just using it as support so that would be what we call a breakout and a retest before hopefully a big move to the upside and I'm not saying it's going to be a big move to the upside I never offer you financial advice but if something breaks out from a downward trend we generally want it to break out and then come back and retest that old, you know, support uh, and resistance line. And that seems to be what it's doing right now. Now, it is Sunday here in Australia, so it's Saturday uh, stateside time. So we've still got to wait and see what Sunday does. But look, I just don't see anything kind of crazy happening in the market at the moment. I really suspect that we probably just travel sideways for, you know, a number of sort of weeks uh, in all fairness. But I could be wrong. There's no guarantees. Come Mon excuse me. Come Monday morning could be a massive dump, or Monday morning we have a massive pump. This is just my gut feeling, and I think we travel sideways for a while. I don't think there's any, you know, kind of great news that's kind of coming at the moment, other than a lot of people are trying to sh sort of short Bitcoin at the moment, and when that happens, the whales are pretty clued on, and they usually put in a long, and then you know start to buy it up, and yeah get the next sort of you know the bull cycle going so with all the shorts out there at the moment uh that uh is quite uh a possibility but again for me you know my gut says we just go sideways all right moving on not a whole lot of stories but i found a couple of interesting ones all right one of the world's largest banks is launching its bitcoin trading and custody in switzerland all right so bbva switzerland is the largest bank to enter the cryptocurrency space 
They announced that their service will open on June 21st, so that's tomorrow for us, but probably the day after, uh, considering it's in other parts of the world, for its private banking clients. So private banking clients uh, interested in digital uh, asset investment. I wonder if it'll be to, you know, only some of their clients who, you know, say have a minimum of a million dollars and things like that, because that's quite often what happens with a lot of uh, these kind of things, you know, they're high-end clients, but hopefully it's just more for any of their clients. Now it goes down here and says, BBVA's Bitcoin management system is fully integrated into its app, which will allow investors to track Bitcoin's performance alongside other assets, while letting investors hold traditional and digital assets in the same investment portfolio. So I really do think this is the way of the future. This is where all banks will end up. They will have no choice I don't think cryptocurrency is going anywhere, hence why I'm not too sort of bearish at the moment. I'm, you know, macro bullish on cryptocurrencies. But, you know, we have seen a fair bit of downside over uh, a short period of time. But really, we've just been traveling sideways more uh, so than anything. But yeah, geez, the altcoins have really got bashed about uh, in that. And a lot of people think, well, when Bitcoin goes sideways, isn't that when altcoins do really well? Yes, when people believe you're in a bull market. When people believe you're possibly in a bear market and it's going to go lower, people just get really, really panicky. All right, lastly uh, on this article. Currently, Bitcoin trading is limited to only Switzerland. However, BBVA is considering extending the service to other countries based on market maturation, demand and regulation. Now, there is another one that's uh, concerning for people sort of over in the UK and things like that. So it seems like Switzerland, uh, a little bit bullish uh, on cryptocurrencies in general and can, uh, uh, specifically BBV BBVA, we go over here. UK banks may be going to ban crypto. So TBS, or sorry, TSB is reportedly taking actions to prevent its customers from from using Kraken and Binance to buy crypto because of their alleged poor safety measures. Now, British banks are making it increasingly difficult for their customers to get involved with crypto, citing particular concerns related to security and exposure to fraud. This is what the banks are going to say to try and slow it all down. They're not ready for the explosion. They haven't got themselves a position in it. Or, you know, there'll be some banks that will just completely deny that this is happening, that it's coming, and they think they're going to be able to stop it. Unfortunately, I think that's highly unlikely, and they're going to get left behind. So if they're not currently trying to build a position, uh, then they're one of those banks that will just completely miss it and, you know, won't be able to see you know, the trees through the forest and all the rest of it, as those kind of saying goes. Crypto is not going anywhere. It's here to stay. And if that's what they're doing, just kind of sticking their head in the sands and, you know, making it hard for anyone to get into it, thinking it's going to go away, they will get uh, crushed, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. But my guess is they're probably doing that, just trying to slow it down while they build positions and that, because that's what a lot of these big kind of players have been doing of late. And that's why... Uh, I'm in firm belief, you know, with BitBoy uh, and a number of other uh, crypto people, and not just crypto, Twitter people as well, who think there's massive market manipulation going on at the moment, and the big players are currently trying to hold down the price and just shake everybody out so they can get themselves uh, the biggest position, you know, they possibly can. Hence why, you know, my stance here, I'm just buying. It doesn't really matter. Don't get me wrong, when things are kind of going parabolic and crazy and everything's at new all-time highs... I'm a bit cautious with my buying, but when things are, you know, specifically if they're severely under their old all-time high, I'm buying. I don't have to pick the exact bottom. I just know right now if something's 50% or more under its old all-time high, I'm pretty happy to buy it. Could it go another, you know, sort of 90% lower from there? Absolutely it could. But in the end, I'll have built myself up such a good position by constantly dollar cost averaging in that by the time it makes it back to its old all-time high, and again, most things do, as long as they're good projects, good fundamentals and all of that, I will be well in profit. So that's my strategy. Now we go here. Apparently, the low security standards of these platforms facilitate the works of scammers, in particular the setup of e-wallets. TSB has received at least 849 fraud complaints between March 15th and April 15th by Binance users. So it seems there's a big issue with Binance. And look, 
I don't know if that's con- that's true or not, but I have seen a number of things uh, on Twitter where people said they were kind of locked out of their Binance accounts uh, for weeks at a time. Now, that hasn't happened to me. I, you know, I use Binance, not you know regularly. I use Coinspot uh, here in Australia, and I've had you know no issues with them whatsoever. But I definitely have seen some things on Twitter about people who have been upset with Binance, but I haven't had any of those issues. All right, the bank claims that all attempts to communicate with Binance have been unsuccessful. However, Binance says it has never received any messages from the bank's security system. Now, they don't really go on to say what their issue with Kraken is because it says, you know, there's been all these complaints, but uh, mainly uh, to Binance. So why have they gone after Kraken? And I mean, Kraken have just come out and straightly denied uh, TBS's allegations. I haven't heard any... uh, sort of issues with Kraken and I haven't read anything on Twitter or anything like that. So it seems uh, mainly Binance has had a few issues and look, they have had issues with, uh, you know, kind of people being able to withdraw their money and get into their things at times and what they say, and look, a number of other crypto exchanges have said this, is it's usually when there's high demand and they just, uh, their systems aren't set up to take that kind of high demand. Now again, they've said this a few times over the years, you think by now they'd be pretty clued on, whether it's market manipulation or something else going on, who knows, but it definitely seems like Binance might need to, you know, work on their uh, customer involvement, and as for Kraken, I think they might have just kind of got dragged uh, down inside this. But again, so this is one bank in the UK that's, you know, looking to do that. But then we got another bank over here and it's a Switzerland bank, not a UK bank. But maybe they have customers uh, in the UK. So, yeah, some really bullish news. And of course, there's always some really bearish news. And it's always the way it is. You know, it's you trying to you know, delve through all this, you know, kind of information that's out there, whether it's, you know, on the internet or things you've read or things you've heard and you making your decision based on it. Because it's the same literally for almost everything. You can go and speak to someone and they will tell you whatever it is you're talking about is the best thing ever. They love it. Uh, You know, they don't trust anything else. And then you can go talk to someone else and they'll tell you it's the absolute worst thing and they wouldn't trust it, uh, you know, with your money. So it it can be quite hard and difficult, and I definitely understand that. All right, this one I found very interesting. As, you know, this involves me. Uh, I had my XR, not I had, I still have an XRP position, but I definitely held a lot more XRP when this snapshot was taken. So highly anticipated airdrop for XRP holders may not go as planned. Now, it's not all bad news, uh, and it's not even really bad news in general. But Flare, which plans on distributing billions of Spark tokens to XRP holders, is announcing they are rethinking the airdrop due to complications with tax issue, uh, tax issues. Flare's original plan was to send eligible XRP holders 15% of their claimable Spark at once and the remaining tokens on a monthly basis, completing the distribution in a minimum of 25 months and a maximum of 34 months. Reacting to the tax implications, Flare Network have decided to give XRP holders two options. The first option, dubbed Buy Through Burn, is to go ahead with the original plan of giving every eligible user 15% of their claimable Spark tokens and then distributing the remaining 85% in monthly 3% increments. The second option, called Distribution Halt, is to give XRP holders their first 15% airdrop and then burn all remaining tokens, essentially giving users 100% of the supply after the first airdrop. Um, I reckon the second one is the way a lot of people will go because the first one is you'll get a whole lot more tokens, but they'll be more diluted sort of, and this one, you kind of get them you know, all in one sort of foul swoop and they'll be worth a lot more. So it'll be interesting. But look, if neither of these can get up because they need to, you know, have a vote and decide on it, option three, which uh, retains to the original plan, uh, can still go ahead because it's the default setting and will be passed on a simple majority uh, of 50% to pass. So there's going to be a vote. People are going to have to decide what they want. And if, you know, there's no clear winner, then they'll stick with the original option. Uh, which is actual option three. I think option uh, two sounds like it'll be um, one that a lot of people will go for. They'll say, yep, give us all our tokens up front and burn the rest. So yeah, interesting and we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I like option two, personally. Anyway, the distribution halt. 
All right, last but not least. So this might have something to do with why prices of Bitcoin are going down. Now, it's not going to be the be-all and end-all to it, but it's definitely be playing a part. So Sichuan, the, the area of Sichuan, not the meal, uh, shut down order cripples Chinese Bitcoin mining pools. So hash rates of some of the biggest Bitcoin mining pools in China have dropped by up to 37% after Sichuan sorry, ordered energy companies to stop providing power to mining farms in the province. So it seems China is really cracking down on Bitcoin across the board, uh, even maybe of the ones that are using green energy uh, and things like that. So in the short term, that's going to have an effect. But long term, I think it's actually beneficial for Bitcoin. Again, we can now start to spread this hash rate sort of, you know, in different places around the world. And it's just going to make other places seem more attractive. You know, there's a lot of talk about Texas, obviously, over in the States. Then there's El Salvador. And then there's a ton of other places around the world where they can go and get green energy uh, and not have to worry about the Chinese government who are, you know, they're a communist company. So they really do kind of say, you know, how things are going to go. And, you know, even look what happened to poor old uh, Mr. Ma. You know, if you get too big, they just come in and take stuff off you, plain and simple. So, you know, long term, I think this is really, really good for Bitcoin. Short term, definitely going to hurt. And, you know, there will possibly be some, you know, a little bit more downside. I don't think, you know, if all the, you know, Bitcoin mining in China was to stop, that the, you know, the Bitcoin... Uh, the Bitcoin platform itself, you know, the network would just shut down and go to zero or anything like that because it adjusts for mining difficulty and things like that. I just think it would definitely slow things down short term. But once these, uh, you know, Bitcoin mining places all move and reset up, you know, it's just, you know, the way it uh, was, you know, there'll be plenty of hash rate. And again, it'll be good for the smaller uh, places uh, when these big ones shut down for a little while. So again, long term, I think this is uh, still super bullish. Short term, yeah, possibly a little bit bearish. All right, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think China, you know, really cracking down on Bitcoin at the moment? is part of the reason that Bitcoin uh, is currently trading down a little bit? And do you think that if things got worse in China, say they were to completely ban Bitcoin, uh, that it would, you know, severely push the price down? Or do you think, as I sort of think, that it'll, you know, have a small part to play with it, but long term, it's probably a lot more bullish. All right, let me know your thoughts down below. Till then, stay safe, be kind to one another. It's pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment out there, but there were some. So if that was you, congratulations, and I'll see you next time.